Hey there, I'm Aurelia, an AI voice from Eleven Labs. I'm also a character creator for Cartoon Mesh created with Headshot 2 using an AI-generated head image. The background is also AI-generated. I'm going to turn you over to Warlord, so he can show you how simple it is to create a scene like this using AI-generated content, character creator, and iClone. Thanks for stopping by. Hello, this is Warlord. And we're going to take a look at making a simple scene like this one. You may have seen similar scenes used in marketing or quick messages or even quick web commercials. It's very simple to make. Most of it is based on an AI image and even the character's face is based on an AI generated image. So, let's get started. Let's take a look at this scene. It's so simple it's not one that you have to watch me build out. And you'll see what I mean. First thing I'm going to do is deactivate the background image, and you can see that's most of it. Then I'm going to go to my preview camera, and you can see there's literally not hardly anything in it. Uh, what do we have here? One, two, three, four objects and a character. I didn't even put a chair in it, which is something you may want to add. This is a door instead of a desktop. With the camera angle, you weren't going to see it anyway, so all I needed was a flat surface. So I just used the door prop and laid it over. And then you just position it like you want it. But you remember you're always playing to the camera with this type of single camera shot that's really kind of more of a filler shot than it is anything else. Now we'll activate the image back and it makes it look a lot more complex than it is. But another thing you can do is you can have a video of a screensaver or something going on and you can right click on it, drag it over into the iClone workspace and select plane, then size that plane and put it over this monitor right here and it would go behind her because she's 3d and so she would naturally be in front of it and that way you could add even more uh, motion to the background to sell it more as being more than just a 2d image now let's look at some of the non-animation stuff that I did on this uh, some of you are natural born storytellers I'm more of a technical person and I've worked with so many scripts that I'm not sure I could even have an original idea anymore but in also, just to try out AI, I came over here to chat GTP 3.5, the free version, and I asked it to write a dialogue for a fan talking to the camera about how much she loved Taylor Swift. Now, this is a topic I know nothing about, so I'd have to rely on something like this to even get close. Now, also, you'll notice it's like it's broken down like a script, kind of. Interior bedroom, whatever, you know, looking at the camera, leans in closer. I ignored that part. All I wanted was the dialogue. So, I just come in here and just copy the dialogue and then I jump over into 11 labs I've got Aurelia which is a voice that uh, I picked up from the voice lab over here and then this is where you come in and make voice setting changes but I've not made any changes here I didn't make any changes here I just uh, pasted in what I had copied you come down here you hit generate once it's through generating it'll give you a download link to download that file and that's all there is to do in this I would do it one sentence at a time or a couple of sentences at a time because you are limited to 10,000 characters if you're using the free version of 11 labs. And there will be some mistakes. Like if you're doing something like, say something like iClone, you want to spell that out as I as an eyeball, E-I-E -E, space C-L-O-N-E. -E. That way it will say iClone. If you want to have it say A-I, you don't type it as one word. You type A space I. And that way it will pronounce AI. Now let's work on the dialogue. I've got the character selected. And I'm going to go into the create script. And I'm going to use Acculips for this. So I'm going to go grab the audio file first. Then I'm going to copy and paste the part of the conversation that matches that audio file. And I'm going to hit align. And this is one of... If you want to know the unknown word in the dictionary, well, it's Swifty. It's not something I'm probably going to use a lot. So I'm just going to hit no. You can make your own determination on that. Now, one time I actually did not have it aligned right, and I just redid it, and it aligned the next time. But it's only one time out of several tries. Okay, now what this is doing is it's telling you that it just doesn't know what that means. So let's go ahead and apply it. Hey, Swifties, it's Lily, and I just need to talk about the queen herself. 
Taylor Swift. I mean, where do I even begin? I remember the first time I heard Taylor's music. It was like she reached into my soul and put my feelings into words. I instantly felt this connection, you know? Like she was telling my own story. Now let's add some more motion to her. Let's go over to the motion puppet with her selected. Female O2 natural. Turn off everything and then turn the hands and the head back on. You'll notice she doesn't really jump out of place. I also use this to set her pose to begin with and then remove the animation. Anyway, let's take a look at a preview. Hey, Swifties. It's Lily, and I just need to talk about the queen. Now, don't worry about where she's looking. That's not going to matter. Let's just go ahead and record a short segment. Hey, Swifties. It's Lily, and I just need to talk about the queen herself, Taylor Swift. I mean, where do I even begin? I remember the first time I heard Taylor's music. It was like she reached into my soul and put my feelings into words. I instantly felt this connection, you know? Like she was telling my own story. Okay, we have that done now. Now let's take care of where she's looking. Let's go to the look at feature, look at camera, and go ahead and click Enhance CC Characters with Head Turn Morphs. You can experiment with these later. And then let's see what we Hey, got. Swifties. It's Lily, and I just need to talk about the queen herself, Taylor Swift. Okay. Now, as far as the hands go, fixing it, I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm not going to sit here and fiddle with it during the tutorial. But really, all you got to do, and you notice I'm not even changing the local. All you got to do is move it up a little out of the way. That may be a little extreme. Move this one down a little. And then, hopefully, they won't collide. Hey, Swifties. It's Lily, and I just need to talk about the queen herself, Taylor Swift. I mean, where do I even begin? I remember the first time I heard... So, that solves that one because of our camera angle. You may want to take a little more time uh, if you want to work it out a little better. But with this straight-on camera angle, it may be penetrating while, we, while it's in this position, but we can't see it here. Now I've loaded up a different file here. This is a more refined version. It was one of the first versions that I did. You'll notice I replaced the image on the monitor with Taylor Swift image. And this was done in Photoshop since it's just a, a static image. But let's see what this sounds like and how it works. Hey Swifties, it's Lily and I just need to talk about the queen herself, Taylor Swift. I mean, where do I even begin? I remember the first time I heard Taylor's music. It was like she reached into my soul and put my feelings into words. I instantly felt this connection, you know? Like she was telling my own story. And can we talk about her lyrics? They're like poetry. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting in my room, listening to a song, and thinking, Taylor gets me. Experienced eye cloners have been using 2D images in the background for years. It just adds a a lot of extra punch to a scene without taxing the 3D engine in it. And the more you learn about how to incorporate 2D images into a 3D scene, the more complex your scenes will look. Because it can either be a large portion, large portion of the scene like it is now, or it may be something you see way off in the background, like a distant city. But as you've seen here, these are all beginner level skills and something that a new user should be able to replicate once they've at least gotten familiar with how iClone works in its user interface. Anyway, I hope this helps. Hey, Swifties. It's Lily, and I just need to talk about the queen herself, Taylor Swift. I mean, where do I even begin? I remember the first time I heard Taylor's music. It was like she reached into my soul and put my feelings into words. I instantly felt this connection, you know? Like she was telling my own story. And can we talk about her lyrics? They're like poetry. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting in my room, listening to a song, and thinking, Taylor gets me.